Stock Trader Jack. I had a great question around stop losses, stops and the trailing stop losses. Um, is there a good time to use either one? Um, this this is actually a great question, just because it is part of an individual stock trader's um, own personal strategy. I'm going to tell you just me personally. Um, I'm going to first explain what that even is for anyone watching. This is a first time for hearing about stop losses. So stop loss, unlike where you buy in and you say, okay, I want to buy 300 shares of SFET and you just stay in and it could go up, it could go down and wherever the wind blows, that's where your account goes. You know, that's great. Uh, except for that's not how some traders like to play. Some traders say if it goes, and this is actually where you can do, say, like a bracket configuration. This is on Thinkorswim. I can say if it goes up 30 cents, then I want to lock in my gains. If it goes down 10 cents, then I want to stop out because I want to. I don't want to have my losses exceed 10 cents per share. Well, in theory, that sounds really, really good because you have the safety net down here. Up there, you have a, you know, you're locking your gains. So why don't I use them and why don't I recommend them? Personally, I don't like to get caught in long squeezes, which is these stop losses are typically are really how these things get done. You have these people who put in all these stop losses. So this is that long squeeze. This is the opposite of what happened to BPTH the other day, which was a short squeeze and kept going up. This happens quick because there's all these stop losses in place. Honestly, market makers, the, I mean, they're not boogeymen, but they can see when you put in a stop loss. It's like you're playing naked at that point. People can see what you're doing. They can see when you want to get out, when you're trying to sell. And that is how, a sh how shorts can sometimes push down the volume is because they see all these stops from, a, from the longs who are in the trade. And you'll notice that even three of them happen just within about a 30 minute time frame. I don't like to get caught in those. That's actually where some of my biggest losses have happened is because I put them in and I think it was going to keep going up and then I get locked out and then you see, see stuff like this happen where it bounces and goes up. I'm like, I don't really, I like protecting myself, but I like to put in a mental stop loss. That just means if it goes below this level, so I use um, alerts from Thinkorswim. So let's just say I was, let's say I was in right now at 259. Okay, well, if it goes below this, I'll, you know, that's where I'm going to get out. If it goes above this, then that's going to give me a signal that I'm on the right track and I want to hang on to my gains. I might even say as soon as it goes up to VWAP, which is this blue line, I'll actually sell out because that's a huge resistance point. So that's where my uh, sale is going to be. But let's just say I see it gradually climbing and then it just shoots up with a nice long squeeze or a short squeeze straight up past there and hits 309. And then looks like I'm like that chart just looks really really good. I might readjust where I want my outing to be just because I'm seeing a change. But if I set and forget, which is what a lot of people do when they set these, I might miss out on some potential gains just because I wasn't watching. Doesn't mean you have to be glued to your computer. The cool thing about these alerts is if it hits past that, I get an alert on my watch. I get it on my phone, so I know when something's happening to my account, which is really nice. And uh, it just tells me, okay, go ahead and get on my phone or whatever is most accessible, and I can decide what I want to do with my trade at that point. I absolutely believe in having a strategy, hardcore, but I think that having your strategy out for everyone to see is not the best way to do it. It's actually how you might end up losing, and remember, you're a variable in this game too. As soon as you put in your stop loss, your stop limit, all that becomes everyone's knowledge, and you might be part of the people who get burned up in these long squeezes. Really quick, I want to cover off on what a stop trailing loss is. This one is, I'm going to set these up for the presentation, but so you can set this up as a trail stop, which will change it from a trigger to a market order. It means if it goes, so kind of similar to a stop loss, it's it's kind of like if it goes below this price, I want out. Well, a uh, trailing stop loss, you usually want to have, rather than it be a, a certain number, you almost want to have it be a percentage. So about a good percentage is 
15 to 20 percent is the recommended trail stop but this means that you're using pure momentum so this is great especially if you are a momentum trader if you're a technical trader you'll like i'd say this is probably one that's at least better than a stop loss it can help you completely avoid like market crashes um honestly it's one that i'd say if you're really going to go with one then i would recommend the trail stop instead for me personally i just like to use the alerts just so that i can decide if it's right for me to get out or if it's if it's you know something where i see more gains available to me